This TV show should never have aired. You're not morbidly obese. Really? You are super morbidly obese. Okay. Hello, you beautiful people. I've got a question for you. Do you eat too much food? Does your family eat too much food? Do you need a white man in a suit to help you stop? Well, I've got the show just for you. Fat Families was a short-lived weight loss program that aired in 2010. The basic concept of the show involves helping a family that struggle with their fat levels to become healthy healthier and lose some pounds. Sounds fairly tame so far, right? WRONG! Because trust me, you won't be thinking that in five minutes. Because this show is mental. Even the host of the show came out recently and said this show could never air today. So let's take a look at the host. Fat Families was hosted by this bloke who's called Steve Miller. Or as you might know him, the no-nonsense fat buster. That is a self-titled name. I wish I was kidding. I'm Steve Miller, no-nonsense fat buster. Losing weight is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people, so you'd want the host of this show to be sensitive, caring, understanding, and those three traits is exactly what Steve Miller is. Watch out, fat families. It's time to get off your wobbly bums and melt that lard. <laughs> Sorry, did you say wobbly bum? What does that even mean? Have they got bums like beer blades? Let it rip. Actually, <laughs> don't do that. I don't know what they've eaten and quite frankly, that could wipe out someone. Also, this woman really doesn't want to give up those crisps, does she? <laughs> to be fair, if I was standing in the street and some bloke tried to nick me crisps off us, I would probably put up a good fight as well. I'd be like, get your own Doritos, you greedy twat. I'm here to stamp out the obesity epidemic that is sweeping the UK, one massive family at a time. Why is this so dramatic? This is like if Mr. Beast made a fat loss program. Last to take their hands off the muffin get a tummy tuck. That is not a good concept for a show. Now, if you thought that intro was overwhelming, you haven't seen anything yet, as there's actually a second intro that Steve does, where he doesn't offer us, like, any more information about the show. He just uses it as a vehicle to insult the fat people a bit more. I'm in Telford, Shropshire, and I'm about to meet one of the fattest families I've met in my- Oh, Christ! That was a hard F. I'm in Telford. A drop shot to meet one of the fattest family. <laughs> Look at his fist. It's clenched when he's saying it. This this man is driving the power of the devil for this. He's mustering it all from the soul within as opposed to the soul outside. This trundling trio are grazing their way to an early grave. Watch out, massive fatties. The lard police are in town. Christ, who's this guy's ghostwriter? Because I kind of want him. Or has someone just bought him a, a thesaurus for Christmas? That's hard to say with a subtle lisp. Also, a big question, which no one's really raised. What is this man's vendetta against over way people like why are they his arch nemesis i bet this man rated the nutty professor zero on rotten tomatoes also the phrase watch out massive fatties the lard police are in town that is a horrific catchphrase to try and get going you know imagine driving down the motorway and you get pulled over by the lard police the show then begins with us meeting the family who will be taking part in the show tanya cook she's the picture of health and along with husband mike they live an active life grandparents Anne and les are fighting fit and kids Ben and Jacob complete the picture. And when you first look at them, they don't look like overweight, right? They look like, you know, quite a, a quite healthy weight. But that's actually because Steve and the producers are playing a little bit of a prank on us. Move over, Barney and the ninjas. But in reality, they look like this. The three fattest cuffs way up. <laughs> That is horrific. That just makes them look even worse. Was the balloon.mp3 file really needed for this? Like, we get it. They're big. Okay. What's that supposed to infer? That they're about to burst or something? Whopping 77 stone between them. Tanya, Anna and Mike have asked for urgent help in losing weight. This is so funny because I know the producers have set this up. They've been like, look, the intro that we did where we, we blew you all up with the balloon sound effect. That's not going to convince the people at home how big you are. The audience aren't going to be convinced by that. But don't stress because we've put a GoPro in the local burger van, so go on, waddle down. On the topic of the producers, the production of the show is actually quite vile. If they don't stop gobbling up giant portions and cutting out the junk, they will be six feet under before they know it. Christ, did I need to see that? I don't think so. What is that angle? Why? Who thought that was a good idea on the production meeting? Oh yeah, let's have a POV on the fork cam. Like, I don't understand what they're trying to show. Ooh, that family eats lasagna with a fork? <laughs> 
<laughs> Disgusted. Lock them away, Lord Police. I've seen enough. Like I say, even if it was healthy food, like someone was eating a kiwi with a fork, I still would think it would be rank. Do people eat kiwis with forks? You can tell I don't eat fruit. Look at us. I look like I'm on the edge of death 24-7. Look at the bags under my eyes, man. Priced more bags than Tesco. One thing that I do think is interesting about the show from the family's perspective, the same multiple times that they're not actually that bothered about being fat. They actually quite enjoy it and they say that they find fat people attractive. If I do look in the mirror, I like what I see. I can stand there naked and like what I see. I love my big body. Go on, lass. So you bloody should. But you look a thousand dollars, love. Well, that's hardly fair, is it? That's clearly a kid's bike. Are they trying to play this off as if that's a normal bike and she's just like a fucking whale? That's a kid's bike, right? That's not an accurate representation. Why does she just look like she stole this off a kid? Nick the dust caps off the local Corsa as well. What is this photo? That is fabulous. Oh my god, love. The little hand on the tree number. Huh, she's a professional. In fact, she loves her body so oh much. Oh god, Christ. No one told us that she was part of the blood. When he said her blood level was high, I thought he meant through her aorta, not her AK-47. In fact, she loves her body so much, she posts pictures of herself on the internet. Isn't that a bit of a silly thing to say? Doesn't everybody post pictures on the internet? Like, I'm being honest, I, I do not like my body, but I still post photos on the internet. Like, that's not really a thing to say. If you're like someone like me, you just play around with the angle a little bit until you look at one and go, you know what? I only look partially hideous there. That's fine. The show then further emphasizes how fat these people are by showing them in some sort of like football graphic. Larger than life, Tanya tips the scales at a Titanic 33 stone. That's a frightening 22 stone overweight. Oh yeah, Tanya's stats are incredible this season, guys. She's had 15 burgers and it's only 10.30 a.m. If she keeps going like this, she could be one of the biggest people in the world. So after that part of the show, there's then another intro by Steve Miller, three minutes into the show. I'm Steve Miller, full-time motivator and former fatty turned fat buster. Christ, it's like some sort of Netflix character arc there, giving Steve Harrington a run for his money with this storyline. Also, he's so sassy with it. Look at this walk. How does he walk that straight? That's like fantastic. That's like, he's been to walking classes. Honestly, it's like walking like a cyberman. A cyberman who's going to delete all fat people. Moving on, Steve's first plan of action is to spend 24 hours with this family who he calls the Tubby Tribe. His words, not mine, to see what an average day in the life looks like for them. Too much time sat on their fat bums, that's their problem, plain and simple. If they don't pull out their chubby fingers, they'll be on the way to an early grave. Watch out, Cuffs, enough is enough. Can you imagine opening up your curtains and you see this guy hurtling towards your house? You'd poop yourself? Honestly, I actually would poop myself. I'd run upstairs, get some loads of chilli flakes, go to the toilet and just try and get as much weight out as possible, crossing me fingers that he's not gonna knock on work. It's a bit like the TV license guy, you just gotta get your head down when they come past. On a serious note, as this video progresses, I want to see if this show actually works and if this guy can actually help them or if he just insults them. I guess we'll have to wait until the end to see. So after Steve initially meets the family, he sits down with them and discusses the lifestyle choices and he finds out that they want to lose weight because in 10 weeks they've got a holiday to Florida booked. And the grandma Anne gives an added reason as to why she wants to lose weight for the holiday. To me, it'd be nice to lose a couple of stone when we get on that plane so I can pull that tray down and eat my meals properly. Right, so let me get this straight on. You want to lose weight so that you can eat more food. Nice. Nice. We're playing checkers and Anne's playing chess. Steve then takes the family to do their weekly shop and this is where we see Tonya has to use her mobility scooter to get around the supermarket, which is a good sign for her to be like, enough is enough. Like if my fat levels got to a stage where I had to press the reverse button in the frozen section of Aldi, I'm probably gonna take action at that point. I have to go over here, I need these, I've got to. This particular aisle bit right there behind Michael is is my problem. After their weekly shop, they then go straight to a Chinese buffet, and the way they film them walking to this is so funny. Bonkers. Christ, the Avengers have fell off since Tony Stark died. Also, who's this guy in like the beige coat? Where's he come from? Have they just picked him up along the way? I'm not too sure. You noticed it's all about seconds. Two plates down. I wonder how many more to go. We have a dessert. Christ, she's even eating off Steve's plate. You know a buffet, you can go up as much as you want. If I'm at a buffet and someone's eating off my plate, like getting their hand chopped off. Trust me, look at my teeth. I can bite through anything. And after they fill the boots at the buffet, they then go home. And this is where we learn that they get their children to basically like 
like run around after them and serve them as much as they can. Alright, Bubs, do me a favour. Another packet of discos. Don't bring me a little individual bag. Bring me a big bag, babes. Business as usual. Sorry, business as usual? Is this woman running like a sweatshop or something? Is this not classed as child labour? Like, I feel like that guy should have an hourly rate, you know? God bless this kid. Can you imagine your mates are on FIFA Pack and Gary Lineker and you've just got to constantly feed your mommy's crisps? Also, like, ten bags of disco she's about to eat. I don't know what's worse. The impact that is going to have on what comes out her rear end or a tongue. A tongue's literally going to be like Gandhi's flip flop. Have you ever ate salt and vinegar discos? Honestly, makes your tongue drier than a nun's DMs. The grandma Anne then opens up and says the reason why she believes she eats so much is because she's depressed. And I guess at this point you have to really like feel sorry for her. And to be fair to Steve, this is the first time we see him, like, genuinely be, you know, empathetic to her, as he does console her, instead of just calling her a lard arse. And at this part of the show, we actually see, like, the severe health impacts it's having on the family being this overweight, as Tanya actually has to use a breathing apparatus to sleep. I don't go for more than a night or two without this. I'm crabby right back to where I've started. Bryce, you know who I still feel sorry for? The little kid. Can you imagine him walking into the parents' bedroom when they're doing it and it's pitch black? You'll think he's getting robbed by Darth Vader? Dad, what have you got your lightsaber out for? <laughs> On the topic of evil things, the next part of the show involves Steve using a tiny little camera to really focus in on all the parts of the body that they don't usually see. And I guess the aim of this is to scare them into showing them how disgusting he thinks they look. If you don't mind, I'm just gonna no. unleash my beast. Whoa! Don't do that. Sounds like Mark Labette on a one night stand. A daytime TV reference. So <laughs> I am on fire today. Possibly for the first time looking underneath. Yep. I've never stomach. seen underneath. What's caused that, in your view, all that fat? Eating too much. I'll admit it, too much eating. Well, that's a hot take. I'm glad she's cleared that up for everyone at home. He has me thinking it's because she just ate some everlasting gum from Willy Wonka. I won't put it down to anything else. Stuff in my face and overeating. Are we going to melt this fat? Absolutely, 100%. Can't wait. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. And after Steve shows them their bodies on this tiny camera, he then sends them to the clinic to get professionally checked out and see what their actual health risks are. And the way he delivers the results to them, I can't lie, is actually quite iconic. The interesting thing is you're not morbidly obese. Really? You are super morbidly obese. Okay. Oh, did you see the pain on her face there? She was like, yeah! I can't lie, he had us. He had us in the first couple of seconds there. You're not fat. Really? You're fucking disgustingly fat. I feel like every doctor should just deliver news like that. So the good news is, you're not going to die in one month. You're going to die tomorrow. Yeah. I think before this, Tanya had a sense of pride about being so fat. And her and Mike really found fat people attractive. I do think things are starting to change. She's beginning to realise that fat people are worse than murderers, apparently, to Steve. And by the way, right, like, I need to say this, right? Embrace your fatty bits. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit of a dad bod. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to put on the pounds here. Embrace it. Who cares? I'm comfortable with it. If you're happy with it, right? Who cares? As long as you haven't got this bloke storming down your street with a tiny camera, I think you're alright, okay? And at this point in the show, I think there's a little bit of a shift in it where they attempt to go from insulting the people to actually putting in measures to help them. However, some of the tactics they use, I do find a little bit humiliating. For instance, Steve makes the family feed a bunch of office workers in the canteen, but the twist is the family have to serve the office workers the portion size that they would eat at home. How many bits of garlic bread do you want? Two, three? Um, just one would be great, please. Just one? Yes, you please. Sure? Oh, give over, man, you boring twat. Someone's offering you an extra piece of garlic bread, you take it. That's the first rule of eating garlic bread. Who just has one piece of garlic bread? Honestly, give me three, love. Fucking Dracula over here. Another tactic they use is to get the parents to look after the children and serve them. So, you know, just kind of what normal parents do. Steve also makes the family try fruit and blindfolds them for no apparent reason at all. Like, they don't even have to guess what the fruit is. He just he just tells them. There's zero reason for these people to be blindfolded right now. Test party. Mmm, red melon. You know it's red melon. Oh, the Bird Box sequel's a bit rubbish, in it? Also, Sandra Bullock, what's happened to her? And possibly the most dramatic strategy that they use to try and make the family lose weight is they renovate their house. And by renovate, I, I use that very loosely because what they actually do is they just take away one of the sofas and swap it with a treadmill. What? That's not a fair trade, I'm sorry. I've got a sofa downstairs, right? I bought that myself. If somebody came and took that away and replaced it with a treadmill, I'd be rioting. Gone from the 
room is one of the sofas, as well as Mike's favourite big boy lounger, something he regularly spent eight hours a day loafing in. And placed in their former shrine of idleness is a gleaming, shiny new treadmill. Honestly, I'd be like, where's me bloody money for me sofa then? I'd be straight on Gumtree trying to buy it back. They also put a tracker on all of the ROMs so they can kind of like see every move they do. And if that wasn't enough, they also install a camera in the sitting room so they can see every single move they do for themselves. Literally a spy camera in their sitting room. I will be able to see exactly what you're up to 24 seven. So if you're sitting on that sofa doing nothing, can't be bothered, full of excuses, I will see it. That is fucking wild. Honestly, it's like a really messed up big brother. It's day 12 in the fatty family household and Tanya's starting to crack as she opens up a pack of caramel hob knobs. I'm sorry, right, but this part of the show is just cruel. Like, why are they putting a camera there? I would literally rather have the heart disease. If I could have a heart disease or a camera in my sitting room, I I'm choosing the heart disease every single day. Steve then leaves and the family, like, records their update with, like, a weekly vlog. Now, this part of the show goes on quite a bit, so I'll just summarise it like the the they started off really well they were, they were losing quite a lot of weight at the start but then towards the end they kind of tailed off and stopped doing everything they were doing at the start which i guess is understandable like that's kind of like when you start the gym you're dead up for it and then as the weeks go on your your motivation drops but steve is not having this because you've got to remember he is a no, no nonsense, nonsense fat buster. so he jumps on zoom with them and confronts them about them slacking off the results at the moment are comp are, are appalling no 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 Excuse me, Tanya, but can you watch your little potty mouth, love? Maybe that was Steve's tactic all along, was just to insult us as she just stormed off and could lose more calories as she runs away. After this call, the family then do buck up their ideas and get back into it, and then they get called in by Steve. And in this makeover, they spend a whole day at this place, and they're not allowed to look at themselves the entire time until the big reveal. And this is how they look at the end of the 10 weeks on the show. So do you know what? Very nervous. Uh, uh, if you're not seeing yourself yet. No. Ah, oh, she looks a bloody million dollars, doesn't she? Well done, Tanya. Love. Do you feel you've shrunk a bit, love? I do look at I've got a waist. I look slimmer. <laughs> I do look slimmer. God oh, bless him. Look doing? at him. Gorgeous, Mike. You're gorgeous. Well so done, son. You're go. gorgeous. How do you feel? Ah. Oh. New person. <laughs> Oh, I actually feel emotional. This is so nice. Is this show okay? It's probably not, but I still feel emotional. You look good. Christ, she looks like a different person. Look at her lost 10 stone. Honestly, get yourself down to Pop World Love. You'll be fighting them off. Fighting them, I tell you. After this, they then do their final weigh-in to see if they've actually lost weight from the process. And we see that Mike and Anne both have lost two stone, which is, in 10 weeks, is, you know, fairly decent. And Tanya has lost three and a half stone, which is just, like, mental. So all in all, like, this family have lost a significant amount of weight from this show so does this mean fat families is, uh, is successful i don't know but one thing i will say is this family were actually like really sound and really canny like they could have been a lot worse like they were up for it from the start so i think that's why they've lost weight i can imagine if there was a family that weren't as up for it i don't think the results would be the same what i'm trying to say is i don't know how much credit steve should get but it does beg the question is steve a professional fat buster I'll let you say in the comments if you would like to see me break down an even worse TV show than this one. Click here now because it's absolutely mental. Click it.